Hi, this is Juanita McDowell with the Real Estate Technology Institute. And today I want to teach you five iPad tips most people don't know. Tip number one, swiping from left to right sure does save you time. What apps do you use all the time? What contacts do you access frequently? There's no need to go looking for them, nor do you even need to bother with the search. From the home screen, simply swipe from left to right and you'll see not only your most recent apps, but your contacts too. Let's give it a whirl. And not only do you see Siri suggesting app based on frequent usage, but you also have access to nearby restaurants, shopping, gas, and more. There's even a news section. Very cool. Hitting the home button returns you to the home page. Tip number two. Did you know that the iPad Air and higher have taken the task switcher to another level? You already know when you double click the home button, you see apps you've opened that are running in the background. Now with iOS 9, you can swipe from the side of the screen while you're inside of an app and yes, open yet another app. Let's give it a try. Let's say I have email open. While I'm within email, I can access other apps that are running in the background. The only thing that I need to do is swipe from the right, pull down this button, and you can see all the apps that I have open that I can access actually while I'm in email. You can do this if you have an iPad Air, iPad Air 2, or iPad Pro. If you have the iPad 2 or, or Pro, you actually have dual screen functionality. This is extremely useful if, say, you're in email, like I am, and you need to reference maybe directions. You can pull down maps or Facebook if there's a conversation you need to reference. Maps, and I can actually type in something that I'm looking for. Tip number three, let's talk photos. Sure, you knew you can edit photos in the iPad. In fact, it's a great place to edit photos. You've got lots of real estate. But did you know that you can also switch between the edited version and the non-edited version by doing the tap and hold gesture, which will actually show the original. And then you can kind of compare, actually determine which one you like the best. In this demo, I'm going to teach you how to take advantage of that feature, as well as using the iPad magnifying glass to really check things out. We'll begin by turning it on. Let's turn on our magnifying glass first. We'll do that by going to settings, general, go to accessibility, zoom, and make sure that's turned on. Ah, let's see. There's a cutie when he was just a baby. I'm actually going to hit edit. I think I'll brighten it. There, we're making it brighter. You can see a difference in the picture with me playing around with some of the settings. Now I'm going to tap and hold to see if I could see the original and compare it to this one. Original. Notice it shows me that's an original in the corner. Before. After. So before I make the change, I can determine if I like it. Let's zoom in on the button in the center of his outfit. I'll use three fingers to tap. At this point, I can hit done or I can cancel. I think I like this version, so I'll say done. Now I have a third picture. Tip number four. Hey, whatever happened to keyboard shortcuts? Oh, they're still here. Just renamed to text replacements. Let me show you how to get to it. Click settings, general, keyboard, text replacement. Now, before I tap, let's just make sure you understand what text replacement will do. It allows you to shortcut things that you type ordinarily. You can use one, two, or three letters to really shortcut things like 
Gmail, make the GM. If you find yourself typing your name and you have a long name, shortcut it. As an example, Juanita, my shortcut would be JN. In order to create a text replacement, you'll actually click on the plus sign in the upper right hand corner of the screen. The phrase is that expression or word that you want to shortcut. So let's just say Gmail and the shortcut will be GM. Whenever you create your shortcuts, remember you should eliminate vowels so that you're not looking as if you're trying to spell a word. Some of my favorite shortcuts for my email, EML. Happy birthday, because I often wish my Facebook friends happy birthday, 8B gets the job done. Text messages, as you can see, you can create a shortcut. JMR is an example of your name, comma, realtor. Using the initials of your name and R will allow you to use, leave a text message signature. You can see some of the text replacements that I have are much longer than others. In this case, the phrase is very long and the shortcut is only five letters long. T-H-E-C-E. -E. So let's see how that works. When I go to email and I'm on the go, and when I type T-H-E-C-E, -E, you can see that I'm given the option to say, thank you for scheduling our CE course. I'll go ahead and hit the space bar and look how much typing that saved me. The only thing I need to do when I'm on the go is simply add the carriage returns. Now how much time did that save me? Tip number five comes from the where's my iPad department. I hope you never lose your iPad but if you do you can always use www.icloud.com to find it or if you have an iPhone you can use your iPhone to find your iPad. All you need to do is type in the Apple ID and password and you're good to go. But wait, what if your battery is dead? That won't work. Thankfully, Apple has given us the ability to know the last location of our iPad before the battery died. But you must turn this feature on. This is how you do it. Go to Settings, iCloud, find my iPad and make sure send last location is turned on. Whew. As you can see that automatically sends the location of your iPad to Apple when the battery is critically low. So if your battery dies, Apple will be able to tell you the location of your iPad before it died. <laughs> Gotta love it. That concludes my five tips. Thanks for watching.